Hello, everybody. Here are some things that you may or may not know about Risk of Rain 2. Number one, Loader is a girl. Yep. When I first found that out, it almost surprised me as much as learning that the Plague Doctor from Darkest Dungeon is also a female. Almost as much. Number two, on an abandoned aqueduct, there's that big gated door in the hill, right? To open it, you need to simultaneously activate two pressure plates that are in any of the eight random spawn locations. If you've played more than a few hours of this game, you probably already knew that. However, did you know that once the door is open, you don't actually have to follow the usual path down to Kiaru and Rinald? That's right. Instead of fighting them on fair terms, you can instead clip through the top of the entrance and find yourself in the chamber's walls where you can then attack without fearing any repercussions. Uh, Wooly, that sounds kind of like an exploit. Are you sure that's intentional? Intentional? No. At least not when Hopu were initially making the stage. But now, the devs are 100% aware of this interaction and have been since way back in Risk of Rain 2's early access period. This cheese is actually the progenitor of the infamous We See You, Mr. Streamer, lying in the Artifacts 2.0 patch notes back on March 31st, 2020. So, yeah, the devs have known about this for a very long time, and if they wanted to change it, they'd have probably already done that by now. I take no responsibility if this no longer works once the DLC drops. Number three, do you like Easter eggs? Me too. Here's a big pile of them in the Celestial Portal. What, are these not good enough for you? Fine. Are you happy now? To reach these islands, we'll need a lot of mobility items, mainly Hopu feathers with a ton of movement speed and a couple wax quails. Look for the wooden beam angled upwards on the small island that you spawned on, jump, and then follow that trajectory into the void. Eventually, you'll see the silhouette of the first island come into view, and then once you land on it, do the same thing again, only further out this time into the blackness. If you fail to find an island before exhausting your available jumps, or just miss, have fun floating down and down. Down, and down 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 <laughs> number four tired of doing those pesky pillars every time you just want to fight mythrix and die i mean get tin looter coins well uh you don't actually have to charge them at all ever so long as you have access to one of the multitudes of methods to reach the arena you can simply walk straight past the barrier once you arrive without ever touching a single pillar i have an entire video dedicated to this topic if you'd like to learn how to pull this off in pretty much every single run number five Vagrants suck, we all know this, but vagrants really suck as melee survivors. You can make them suck to a considerably lesser degree by slapping their tentacles rather than their big squishy face. Just use these much more accessible hitboxes rather than trying to get to the invite only ultra exclusive club that is the top of a vagrant's head. Number six, captain's hacking beacons will automatically open any interactable with a money cost in its radius after a short period of time. The more expensive the interactable, the more time it takes to open. However, did you know that it prioritizes the interactable closest to itself? No. Well, well, I don't blame you, it doesn't really seem like something you need to pay attention to at first. But for multi-shops, this actually matters a lot because the placement of the beacon determines which of the three items it will grab for you. All you have to do is make sure that you aim the beacon closest to whichever item you want, and then once it arrives, it will begin hacking that one instead of the others. Obviously, if you have more than one interactable inside of the radius, this gets a bit tricky as the multi-shop item you want may be out of range, say, of a chest that you also want. Still, it's a pretty good piece of information to know once you find your next double poglip single ATG multi-shop. And last but not least, number seven, when you have fully charged the teleporter and hit the button to go to the next stage, it then starts draining all of your excess money down to zero, right? Well, that money is actually converted into experience and not simply tossed away wasted. Again, this is something you likely already know. But get this, once your money is depleted and the game begins the teleport sequence to bring you to the next stage, it doesn't actually keep checking to see if your money is still at zero. This means that any source of money you get in that small window between the vacuum ending and you actually being teleported teleported is kept once you arrive at the next stage. If you see any barrels, stray enemies, gores, tome nuggies, and especially blood shrines, you can sometimes bring over upwards of three chests worth of gold to use right at the start of the next stage. The earlier on your run is, the more potent this mechanic becomes, as you'll be able to boost your power drastically in such a short, in such a short, in such, in such, Sus, 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 in such a short time frame that you'll just snowball out of control. Don't be too quick to start picking up your money, however, as the vacuum doesn't end when you see your money hit zero. It actually ends about a second or two after that. Anything you pick up during that one to two second window will then also be lost and converted into XP, so keep that in mind. And that's it. Seven quick little factoids about Risk of Rain 2. How many things did you already know and how many things did you learn? If you knew them all, congratulations. Uh, here, take this. You are now officially a certified video gamer. Leave a like or dislike on the video as well as a comment below. You can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash woollygaming and join our Discord server at discord.gg slash woolly. Thank you for watching and oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, the DLC is getting so close. Hey!